I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And I pray for you this week that the anointing of God's Spirit will rest upon every one of you. And that the Spirit of God will bring us to that place where He has ordained for your life, even as the month of June comes to an end this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That through these messages, God's Spirit will guide you step by step until you enter into His rest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, I know God has a lot for us this week. Can we call for that daily bread, just like the Lord has commanded us to do? Are you ready? Join me in faith and declare, say, Father, I demand now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Today, my needs are met, all of them, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Every need that will show up in your life is meant to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. We've been talking about entering into God's rest. Praise God. And, and I'm reading today from Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11. Hebrews 4, 11. It says, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Brothers and sisters, this is not something that we say maybe or maybe not. No. He wants us to enter it. He's bringing us into it. And now here he says, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Let us be diligent. Let us be careful. Let us be uh, follow through and see to it that we enter that rest. Now watch this. He said, lest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. The, if you don't enter the rest, it means you have fallen because of disobedience. Now, What's this telling us? It's telling you that disobedience will make you fall short of entering his rest. You see that? Now, what kind of disobedience are we talking about? Now, if the Spirit of God instructs you, see something. Now, now I'm going to show you um, also. You know, because he, he talked about unbelief. He says, let us be careful lest an evil heart of unbelief prevents you from entering that rest. Now here he now talks about disobedience. So there's two words, unbelief and disobedience. Why would you disobey? You disobey because of unbelief. If you don't believe that there is a promise of entering his rest, now this is what Satan comes after in our minds. Everything God has said, he attacks it. And how does he attack it? He attacks it through unbelief. If he can get you to disbelieve what God has said, oh, it's then easy to make you disobey God. You see that? Now, that's why I told you this before. That's how he was able to get Adam and Eve. First, he attacked their belief. He got them to think differently from what God said. Now, once that happened, then it was easy for him to get them to disobey God. Praise God. So, now he says, let us be careful. Let us be diligent so that we will enter that rest. I told you that rest is the place where the word of God is fully in control and is working in your life. You just know that the word of God is working. You see, everything God does, I've shared that with you already. 
Everything we do with God has to be by faith. Let me show you uh, what Jesus said. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. Now, I want to look at this. Jesus speaking here. He gave this invitation. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, now look at that statement again. He says, if you are laboring and you are heavy laden, heavy laden with, with work, heavy laden with, with trying to, you know, sometimes uh, the, the way people have put the whole work of faith, it makes it look so tedious. And because of the, all the laws and they try to make you look before you can really serve God, you need to obey all these laws. And you're like, man, is that possible even? Now, now Jesus said, if you find yourself struggling, he says, come to me. I told you before that he is the only one that can take you by the hand and lead you into his rest. You can't stumble into it. You can't find your way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, that's powerful. When he says, I am the way, he's not saying, find the way. He's saying, find me. When you find me, you find the way. Now, it's funny because you would not want to think that the way is a person. <laughs> Imagine that. That the way is a person. You wouldn't want to think that way. But that's the mystery of God. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I come on, Shadi Kadaya. I can tell you a lot about that. Now then. Hmm. He says, come. And when you come, I will give you rest. There is no rest without Jesus. You can't enter into his rest without him. It's there, there is no way. <laughs> there is no other way. Now, I'm telling you, you know, you get to God and say, God, I want to enter your rest. Don't talk to me about Jesus. God will tell you, go to Jesus. There is no other way to enter his rest. Jesus promised to give it. And that's because he has the ability to give it. Praise God. Yes, he has the ability to give it. Now, you remember one time Jesus was, was with his disciples and they began to pluck some ears of the corn. And the Pharisees saw that and said, can you imagine this? It was a Sabbath day. Can you imagine these fellows eating, you know, walking on the Sabbath day? You're not supposed to walk. You're not even supposed to harvest. So they considered harvesting corn to eat as work. So they said, you're not supposed to. And Jesus said to them, he says, hey guys, relax. And then he said, even me, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, they, in fact, they, made the, they have made the Sabbath thing look like a law itself. They have made the Sabbath day look like work in itself. Because people struggle to keep the Sabbath day. But that's not the whole idea. And Jesus had to tell them that, look, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. What does it mean, the Lord of the Sabbath? I'm the one who will tell you if you're resting or not. Praise God. Yeah, that's what Jesus said. And because the Pharisees were, they were just, I mean, Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath day, became a problem. And Jesus had to remind them, you know, when he healed the woman that was bowed over, he had to remind them that this woman is a daughter of Abraham. What other day is best for her to be healed than the Sabbath day? Because she's, that whole process of, by being bowed over and walking is walk. Now on the Sabbath day, this woman is going to be struggling to walk like that also. 
So Jesus said, hey, it's time for her to enter her rest. So you see, he healed her so that she can rest on the Sabbath day. Praise God. Of course, that resting now becomes a complete healing, not just that only that day, then by Monday, by the following day, she'll get back to her from her. No, no, no. He healed her. So he was trying to tell them that, look, this is what the Sabbath means. It means bringing deliverance. It means bringing succor. It means bringing provision. That, that's what the Sabbath is all about. And the Sabbath is about rest. But they didn't get it. They are just thinking it's one day out of the whole week that you're supposed to. Today I'm not going to walk. Today I'm just going to sit down. And nah. God used these whole things to teach the children of Israel. Step by step, action after action. You remember the manna when they were in the wilderness. The manna comes to them every day except the Sabbath day. Now guess what happens on the Sabbath day? The, the day before the Sabbath day, the manna will come. They, God told them to gather for two days. Previously, they gathered for more than a day. It, it gets spoiled. But the day before the Sabbath, God tells them to gather for two days and it stays. Why? God was trying to teach them that when you labor, think about the place you get to where you don't have to labor. That's what God was teaching them. But all they could think about was a day out of the seven days that you just rest. You know, sit down at home, play with your family. But life was beyond that. So they began to arrest people who were doing stuff on the Sabbath. They were doing all kinds of labor. If they catch you doing any labor, they say, hey, you have, you have defaulted in the law. Come on. That arrest in itself is work. <laughs> yes, it's work. You're going to arrest somebody on the Sabbath. You're going to accuse somebody on the Sabbath day. You too, you're working on the Sabbath day. So who's going to be liable for the crime? The person you're coming to arrest or you too that was... The arresting officer. Praise God. All right. All right. So now he said, come. And when you come, I will give you rest. Then he said something in the next verse. Verse 29. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul. Take notes. He says, come, I will give you rest. Now you think, oh, I'm not going to walk again. Then the next thing he says, take my yoke now. Take my yoke. And when you take my yoke, he says, learn of me. And learn how to do work the way I do work. When you learn how to do work the way I do work, you will understand how to rest. He says, you shall find rest for your soul. Why? For my yoke is easy and my body is light. Take note. We as people do all kinds of work to see to it that we survive. That's the mentality man has. But Jesus is saying, uh-uh. There is a work that I have assigned for you to do. If you find that work and you do it, he says, what will you do? You will find rest for your soul. So the rest is not close crossing your leg and putting your head backwards to sleep. No, the rest is a walk. Are you listening to me? The rest is a walk. Now you understand when he says labor to enter into his rest. So when Jesus began to say things like, take no thought for your life, saying, what will I eat or what will I drink or clothes or what will I put on? He says, your father has already taken thought consigning all those things. Now, I was telling you this on, on, I was telling you this last week, Thursday and Friday. Your father has already taken thought concerning all these things and haven't taken thought concerning them. He has spoken words, words, definite, deliberate words concerning all these things. Brothers and sisters, 
Your father have spoken words concerning the clothes you will wear. Your father have spoken words concerning the school you will attain. Your father have spoken words concerning the kind of life you will live, how you will be sustained at the different stages of your life. Your father have spoken words. Your father knew that you were going to be on earth in 2023. Your father have spoken words of your sustenance in 2023. Hey, listen to me. Angels are all over waiting to be assigned by you because your father has commanded them to. He says in David, he will give his angels charge consigning you to keep you in all your ways. Now, it is not now, it's not today that he's giving the angels charge consigning you. He has given the angels charge consigning you already. Their job is to keep you in all all your ways brothers and sisters now you understand that you are not meant to struggle now you understand that he didn't plan it that your life will be a life of struggle no your life is supposed to be a life of ease a life of 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 calmness a life of rest that's the plan he planned for you hi kabu satakataya hmm so when Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. What's he saying? He's not saying, I'll tell you, oh, and now that you have come, okay, go, go lie down there. Don't worry about anything again. I'll take care of everything. He is saying, when you come, I will give you my yoke, which is the right yoke you're supposed to carry. I will give you my walk, which is the right walk you're supposed to do. But hey, brothers and sisters, that walk brings you to the place of rest. So Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what's going to happen? All those things that you've been seeking after, all those things that you're struggling to attain, all those things that you're trying to get, he says, Kalamahi, it will all be added to you. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is a work that God has called us to do. And that work is finding out his mind, finding out his truth concerning your life. He's not called you to chase money. I keep telling you this. He's not called you to go around looking for how to raise money. He's not called you to go around and looking for how to... Nah. No. There is a work he's called you to do. The work in seeking to know his mind and accepting his mind and walking right in it. That is the work that brings rest. And that's his intention for you. Praise God. And I pray that the Spirit of God will teach you, will take you in and reveal his plan for you today in Jesus' mighty name. My time is up, praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, let today the Spirit of God guide you step by step and position you right to fulfill his purpose. God bless you, I'll see you tomorrow.